Hi everyone, back together again. Today is Wednesday. No, yesterday was Wednesday. Today is Thursday, the 3rd of February. Another popular proverb that is, I think, one of those that's perhaps um, regularly quoted and equally misunderstood is uh, from Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Let's read it and then we'll talk a little bit about it. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So uh, what's going on here? Uh, typically, this verse has been used to instruct those who are in the faith and form them in the kind of, I think, as a polemic against the wisdom of the world, that somehow God's wisdom and the world's wisdom are mutually exclusive. But that's not exactly true. I mean, scripture, I understand where people get at this. Uh, you know, in the New Testament, we find that Paul is talking about uh, the wisdom of God is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it doesn't, this wisdom of God is not pure foolishness. Furthermore, or to the world, uh, furthermore, it, it goes the opposite as well. The wisdom of the world can and often does speak in a similar way as the wisdom of God. Why? Because, namely, humanity is created in the image and likeness of God. There's imputed onto us the image and likeness of God. Each person has it, and collectively, we have it. So when we talk about the wisdom of the world, we're not being mutually exclusive and saying, there is no wisdom of God in this wisdom. No, I would argue, and many would also, that when we talk about the wisdom of the world, it actually is predominantly the wisdom of God that has been imputed to us uh, in our creation, but then also given to us in our intellect. And God is the one who created the intellect and the mind and the capacity to gain wisdom and knowledge. So I, I don't think we can use verse 10 here of Proverbs 9 as a, as a polemic against the wisdom of the world. But what is it rather than, we ask? Well, I, I think we take it at face value. It's... For, uh, Proverbs 9.10, this verse is an encouragement to live in a right relationship with God. In fact, Proverbs 9.10 is really a reiteration of the theme of the whole book of Proverbs. You might want to reference Proverbs 1 and verse 7, where it's almost an identical verse, where Solomon gives the theme or the purpose for the writing of this particular wisdom literature. So Proverbs 9.10 really stands as an encouragement to live in a right relationship with God. How do we do that? Well, the starting point, the beginning of this wisdom is to live in fear of the Lord. Now, it sounds a little strange to us because we're always trying to, I think, live without fear. In fact, uh, there's a Christian bumper sticker that was really popular in the 90s when I was uh, actually just wrapping up college. So it's probably the late 80s and 90s, uh, late 80s and early 90s. Boy, I'm dating myself now. But anyway. Uh, the bumper sticker said, um, no, N-O, 
fear, no peace. Um, and then it said, no, K-N-O-W, fear, no peace. I think what it was getting at is that if we know the God of the universe, if we fear him, then we find peace. And that's one of the tensions. It's one of the ironies of scripture. Because I think this word fear has been minimized over the years. This word fear neither means to be afraid of, nor simple respect. And I think oftentimes we understand we're not to be afraid of God, but this is neither a simple respect of God. It's kind of both and at the same time. God is powerful and, a, and authoritative and to be feared. And oftentimes we lose sense of that, especially this side of the cross. In fact, we read the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament. And we have to say things like, well, God changed because the God of wrath, the God of anger, the God of fear in the Old Testament isn't the God we know today. But how is that possible if God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow? I think we've lost the sense of the fear of God. We ought to be afraid. There should be a sense of us because God is so infinite and we are so finite that there should be more than just a proper respect. We should know that God is to be feared and not just simply uh, a loving friend. You know, uh, I've talked about this a little bit before, but one, one of these, um, you know, little doll things that came out was uh, Buddy Jesus. And he's got like two shooter hands and, you know, got a wink in his eye. I'm your buddy. This is Buddy Jesus. I got you, buddy. That kind of Jesus. Well, God is much more than that kind of God. Jesus is much more than that kind of God. Jesus is to be feared. So the fear of the Lord. This is the beginning then. This is the place we start. Now, is it only the beginning? It is not only the beginning. The beginning and our continued life in wisdom, in the wisdom of God. And knowledge then, and by the way, uh, in the Hebrew, there's not a whole lot of difference between wisdom and knowledge. Uh, we try to say, well, one is of the Lord and one is of man. That's not true. They're really quite synonymous. So I, I think that Solomon is trying to get more at wisdom and knowledge together than the trying to determine the difference between wisdom and knowledge. So the fear of the Lord, and re, we remember also this word Lord in the Hebrew is spelled uh, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, without vowels, Yahweh. But the Jew would not dare to say the name of the Lord. So um, in the Bible, it's just capitalized L-O-R-D, the Lord, but it's Yahweh. It's not just some God. This is the God of Israel. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge or this wisdom, we might say, of the Holy One is understanding. Now, some would make a big deal about uh, the difference between the Lord and the Holy One. But I'm not so sure we can do that. Um, the Holy One is and has been used to talk of the Messiah. That's somewhat mess messianic language, although I'm not sure that Solomon here is getting uh, at the Messiah. I think he's just using Holy One synonymously with the Lord. The Lord is the Holy One. And so, again, I, I don't, we won't spend a lot of time here. I would not say that this is in and of itself a messianic text, 
meaning that we would bifurcate between the Lord Yahweh and the Holy One, the anointed, the Messiah? I don't think so. I think this is all the one true God. So the knowledge then of the Holy One is understanding. So the beginning of wisdom is fear and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we are to fear and understand God. That's how we know, gain knowledge and wisdom. We are to fear and understand God. This is the encouragement of this particular text. And this is the reason it was written and the meaning therein. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge, this wisdom of the Holy One is understanding. So we, we get to know the Lord our God. That's what this text is encouraging us to do. To have a proper understanding of God and a proper fear of God. Not afraid solely and not just respect with something in between. We'll leave you with that for the day. Uh, hope that blesses you. I would spend some time, if I were you, contemplating the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord, asking God, uh, how can I understand and fear you better? Let's pray. Lord God, thanks for the gift of this day. Uh, what a beautiful Thursday this is. We ask that you would bless us into the rest of this day, what's left of it. Help us to practice your presence, to contemplate Proverbs 9 and verse 10. And to truly um, give you our fear, God. We pray you would be our fear object and none other. That we would understand you through wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's always a joy, friends. Love you. Miss you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.